It's Prince Charles already establishing kind of the tenant of his reign. And what impact will that have on William and Catherine and Harry and Meghan? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany. And today we are going to be talking about just kind of the aspects of Prince Charles, or sorry, King Charles III, King Charles III speech that he gave today to the nation, reflecting on the loss of his mother and what this means for his children, Catherine and William, and Harry and Megan, he made some pretty bold statements basically and kind of reshuffled things. And I put a lot of, you know, aspects of what the future of the crown will look like into perspective. And it seems to have been a great boon for Catherine and William and a kind of a, can we say a slight towards Harry and Megan. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, uh, like I said, my name is Brittany and on this channel, we talk about everything related to Royals. So this news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. We will cover it all right here. So if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. And obviously this is the day after the queen has died. I'm actually wearing my shirt that I got at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And at the bottom it says, thank you, ma'am. And so I'm super excited to be able to wear this shirt that I got there and just kind of remember the queen and the amazing legacy she left. And Charles is a huge aspect of that, him and his children. And so today Prince Charles gave a pretty wonderful speech remembering his mother and her impact on the monarchy and made some kind of declarations that changed, led to a little bit of shuffling, at least in one social media account. And I think left another couple scrambling to figure out what to do. So just to begin with, Prince King Charles, King Charles, the third is officially King of England. He has met with the prime minister and he will have his privy chamber council meeting to, or very early tomorrow morning, at least early for my time. It'll be 10 a.m. on um, in the UK, 5 a.m. where I'm at. And so this will be kind of establishing him as king officially. And we've gotten some bit of notice about that. And obviously he's gone through this process of really trying to establish himself in this kingly role. And one of the first things he did, which I thought was unbelievably crucial was to go out and greet the throngs of people who are outside Buckingham Palace waiting to pay their respects to the Queen. So Prince Charles is in kind of a precarious position as all hereditary monarchs are when they inherit the crown through death. There is a, and even vo some voluntary abdications if there was scandal. They have to do, have this process where they have to establish themselves as a new leader, tell everybody who they are and lead them into the future. Especially as the queen was such a, a, a foundational figure throughout UK history really, or at least in the last 70 years. And so he really has to connect with the people. And I think he did a fantastic job of that, both him and Camilla. And Camilla did a great job as well of letting him have the main line where most of the TV cameras were while she went in the background and also greeted people. I think that's a fantastic division of labor because the consort of the monarch is supposed to be there to support the monarch. They're not there to take attention away from the monarch. They're there to just add their presence to the monarchy itself. So you have Charles and Camilla who went out and did this today and he obviously met the prime minister after that and then he gave, he prepared a speech, gave it, and then it was recorded and televised later. So here, just listen to a bit of this. I speak to you today with feelings of profound sorrow. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration, an example to me and to all my family. And we owe her the most heartfelt debt any family could owe to their mother for her love, affection, guidance, understanding, and example. So I think it's just wonderful that he recognized his mother, the service that she gave to her country, and just kind of the process. I feel sorry for monarchs and royals in this situation because if you are the direct heir, there's just not a ton of time for you to really mourn. It's, you have to get going. You have to establish yourself as the king. And William, as a prince of Wales, I jumped the gun there, but yes, William, as a prince of Wales, you have, you are the heir presumptive. You have to kind of jump ahead and start getting going on these processes, cementing yourself, making arrangements, talking to the people you will be working with. I, I, I don't envy Wales at all because you just don't get really a chance to kind of 
you know, relax and grieve like other members of the family do. So after Charles, William, and Harry left Balmoral, Zara Phillips, uh, Princess Eugenie, and Beatrice all arrived and obviously the Duke of York, Prince Andrew is still there as far as we know, and Prince Edward and Coast Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, are also there. So it's clearly a time where the, the direct family members are going to mourn privately, but William and Charles just don't really have the opportunity to do that. There's so much they need to do. There's so much they need to arrange. That's why I do kind of like the aspect of um, voluntary abdication, because what I feel like it gives the, the royals a chance to do is when the monarch does pass, or the former monarch in this situation, of abdication, then you can kind of mourn without having to deal with the processes of being also, you know, the new head of state. Not only is Charles the new head of state, they have a new prime minister. So it's like this confluence of everything happening kind of at once, which is really kind of a crazy storm. And the next big thing was Charles really talking about William and Catherine and how they will now have the titles of Prince and Princess of Wales. So take a listen to this. As my heir, William, now assumes the Scottish titles, which have meant so much to me. He succeeds me as Duke of Cornwall and takes on the responsibilities for the Duchy of Cornwall, which I have undertaken for more than five decades. Today, I am proud to create him Prince of Wales to Wissog Cymru the country whose title I've been so greatly privileged to bear during so much of my life and duty. With Catherine beside him, our new Prince and Princess of Wales will, I know, continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the center ground where vital help can be given. All right, guys, when I first heard that Charles say the Prince and Princess of Wales, was, oh my gosh, they're officially the Prince and Princess of Wales. So the Prince and Princess of Wales title is a title that is given to the heir presumptive to the throne, but it's not something they automatically inherit. So William automatically inherited the title of the Duke of Cornwall, which is why the social media accounts for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were changed to the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge, you know, try saying that six times fast. Changing that, I thought, you know, just for clarity's sake, it did not have to say Cornwall and Cambridge all the time. I was like, I really hope they give them the title Prince and Princess of Wales as quickly as possible. Let's just get this over with so we don't have to all say this mouthful all the time. And Charles, you know, to his credit, went ahead and did that right away. He made them the Prince and Princess of Wales. Obviously, Catherine is the first Princess of Wales since Princess Diana. So that, uh, you know, she got divorced, and I think it was 96. So it's been about 26 or so years ago. And so this is a huge moment for Catherine and William as well. And it's really shown the close bond that William and Charles have with each other and how Catherine, I think, has been instrumental in kind of mending that gap and how Charles had no qualms giving that title to his oldest son. And I think as well, it's really important because for Charles to go ahead and do that, because again, he has to move things quickly. And I think Charles, again, knows he's not maybe the most popular guy with people, but he knows William and Catherine are and that everybody's waiting for them to get their titles. So why wait? Just go ahead and give it. And I also think that Charles has been Prince of Wales for so long. He was like, oh my gosh, if anybody else can have this title, I will be thrilled. I'm finally king. And that's, you know, just to go back to kind of the mourning issue, that's the problem too, is Charles is probably thrilled to be king, but hates how he became king. So it's just kind of, kind of a weird conundrum, I feel like in a lot of ways, even though everybody was anticipating it, he did actually have a little bit of comment to them, to it, about it, to the prime minister. So go ahead, ahead and take a listen here. Your majesty. Anyway, but um, I mean, must have taken, it's been so touching uh, this afternoon when we arrived here. All those people mm -hmm. come to give their condolences. Your flowers. Majesty, my very, very sincere they very condolences. They were all very kind. It's the moment I've been dreading, mm -hmm. as, as I know a lot of people have, but mm -hmm. try and keep everything going. Absolutely. Come, come, Thank come. you. 
I just love how he acknowledges his mother and how this was, you know, kind of expected, but you know, I think the timing was again, a complete shock. They knew it was coming at some point, but obviously not everybody was there. So whatever happened to the queen happened suddenly. But back to the prince and princess of Wales. This is, I mean, it's just so exciting to see kind of this change happen. And I know, you know, it's tragic, you know, the queen passing is oh so tragic and she was just such an influential figure, but it's just so, exciting to see Catherine and William really be able to step up and have this, you know, elevated position because we haven't had the Prince and Princess of Wales in so long. I mean, I know technically Camilla was the Princess of Wales, but she did not use that title out of respect for Diana and her sons. And so that Catherine can finally inherit this, I think is marvelous. And just so you know, cause I know some people don't know how all the titles in the various monarchies work. So in the UK, the heir presumptive has the automatic title of the Duke of Cornwall and the Duke of, there's a dukedom in Scotland they give automatically and a couple other titles as well. However, when it comes to the Prince of Wales, that is designates him as the heir, but that is a title bestowed upon the um, Prince of Wales by the monarch. So Charles was named Prince of Wales when he was nine, but his investiture, I believe was when he was about 21. I hope William and Catherine get an investiture as well, but you look at other monarchies, so you have um, the Princess of Orange, so that's Princess Katharina Amalia of the Netherlands, so that's her title that designates her as the heir presumptive is the title Princess of Orange. And then you had the Duchess of Brabant in Belgium and the Princess of Aurelius in Spain. So all these different titles have designate the heir presumptive. The Scandinavians do the easy thing. They just call whoever is the heir presumptive crown prince or princess. That's that's how they do it. But anyways, so going back to Catherine and William, I, you know, I, I think it's funny for the Cambridge's kids too. Well, I guess they're the Wales's kids now. It's this changing of the titles is going to take a bit because we've been so used to calling them the Cambridge's to call them the Wales's just seems so weird. And even though I like calling them the Prince of Princess of Wales, changing the Cambridge's to the Wales's, I think will take a little bit more of an effort, but changing this, their kids went from Prince George of Cambridge and you know, Princess Charlotte of Cambridge, Prince Louis of Cambridge to Prince George of Cornwall and Cambridge. And now it's Prince George of Wales. So the children's titles will actually change as well. They will now be the Prince and Princess, Princes and Princess of Wales, not of Wales the same way their parents are, but um, Princess Charlotte of Wales rather than the Princess of Wales, Princess Charlotte. So Catherine will be Catherine the Princess of Wales. It's, it's kind of confusing. So these changes I feel like for the kids are very, are very interesting because it happened right as they were starting school. So they started out as the Cambridges. Next day they were the Cornwalls and Cambridges and now they're the Waleses. So they've had three days and three different last names in the school, which I feel like can only happen in a monarchy. But again, this change I think was good to happen hastily. Charles needed to establish this very, very quickly. And I think he did a good thing by going ahead and saying, yes, they are the Prince and Princess of Wales. And I love how he just kind of truth bombed it in the middle. I thought that was kind of fantastic. And again, it's just a sign of the times and the change. And I think William will be a fantastic Prince of Wales and Catherine will be a fantastic princess of Wales. I think they will wear that title proudly and they'll wear that title well. And I think we'll see them kind of, again, grow more and more into the roles that they have because there'll be a lot more pressure on them now. There'll be a lot more intensity on them now because this is a big, big title. Prince William and Catherine, I've kind of said it before on my live streams, they were kind of allowed to coast for a bit as royals, which I think actually was really good as they were raising their kids. Obviously their kids are still young, but they're older now. They're not, you know, babies and toddlers. Whereas, you know, you, other heir presumptives like Crown Princess Victoria, you know, she has had her children and she's had to be the heir presumptive while raising her children as well, which adds an extra bit of pressure on her. That's pressure Catherine and William have not had. And so it'll be interesting to see how they manage it. We did see Catherine today, even though she probably already knew she was the Princess of Wales. The Princess of Wales did her, did her own school run. So there were a couple pictures people caught of her leaving their house in Windsor and going over to pick up the children. Next week, depending on when the state funeral is, it'll be, uh, I think we will see the whole family. Perhaps Louis is the only one who, will, who we will not see as he was a hoot and a half at the pageant. So I don't know if they'll, they, this is not the type of service where they'll want the same antics. So we'll see if he does go to the service. And 
you know, speaking of other children, I think the big question everybody's wondering is what's going to happen with Archie and Lily and just the Sussexes in general. So this is what Charles had to say. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. I feel like this is a bit of shade for Charles. I feel like to me what encapsulates this statement is good luck on your future endeavors, guys. Good luck. And I do not fault him for saying that at all and I do not fault his intention in that direction. And it's clear that that lineation of well, you know, they're doing their overseas stuff, which just means it's not here. They're not here anymore. They're over there. Now, well, I plan on doing a video kind of of Charles Sussex problem because he does have a problem that he needs to deal with with them. And, you know, I just don't know how that'll turn out. I have a couple of ideas, but Harry and Meghan, I think, are looking at Charles kind of hastily wrapping things up, making sure, you know, his wife is considered queen consort. He said that in his speech as well. And, you know, Catherine and William being the prince and princess of Wales, he was very particular to say just Harry and Meghan, not Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. A lot of people are reading into that, that maybe their titles are being pulled as well. We don't, we won't know that for right now. And I don't think that would be something he announced publicly. However, I do think him not stating that Archie and Lily will be now Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet is very, very telling. If that was going to be the case, I feel like he would have mentioned it, said something about it, but he didn't. Instead, he just said Harry and Meghan and didn't even mention the grandkids. And again, I, that's so sad because I think Harry and Meghan, their critical mistake here in this situation is not thinking through what would happen when the queen died and Charles, the guy you've been bashing for months on end, years on end, is going to become king. And he's going to be the one with the purse strings, with the power. I mean, he was always the guy with the purse strings, but the purse strings, the power to pull their titles, to really limit their influence in a way he hasn't before. And I don't think they thought that through correctly. Because again, if you are within a royal circle, you need to make sure you're sucking up to the king and the next in line. Don't forget the next in line because that person can have a huge impact on your future. If you just suck up to the king and you're all, you know, friends and buddy buddy, but you disrespect the heir, as soon as the heir becomes king, guess whose head is next on the chopping block? Why it's yours because you made the critical mistake of not thinking through what would happen when the monarch is no longer the monarch because monarchs do die. So Harry and Meghan um, are, I think, have been very much put in the corner by Charles. Him saying, well, you know, they have my love, but this, you know, this is, they're doing their overseas thing. It's basically telling us that they're not gonna be back. And he has made that firm. So I don't know if that's something he has told Harry necessarily in those many words, but he's now told the public that Harry and Meghan will not be back in the British monarchy. That's what he's told us. Archie and Lilibet probably will not be, have titles either. I think that's also what he told us here in these statements. And again, I think this is what was necessary. This is what had to happen because we cannot have Princess Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet living in California with no real connection to the monarchy. That's just silly. And again, Harry did not make the effort to bring his children to spend time with Charles. And it's like, did they not think this through? It's so obvious. But again, Harry and Meghan are not the best at this. And one other thing I'll mention is, I just think, I wonder how enraged Meghan is that now that she's just been referred to as Meghan by the king, but now her sister-in-law is now the Princess of Wales. Because here's the thing, I think when Catherine and, and Meghan both had the title of Duchess, Meghan could kind of think, well, maybe we can compete. We are equals because we, you know, we both have the same title. And, you know, even she had the same title as, you know, Camilla. Camilla was the Duchess of Cornwall. So it's like, we were all these duchesses, but now Camilla is queen. Catherine is a princess and Meghan is just still the Duchess of Sussex that she can't use the HRH with. And so I think that's probably going to be kind of maddening for her. But again, this is things that Charles has to do. And I, again, I'll do a whole video more unpacking the Sussex issue, but I think he needs to nip the Harry and Meghan issue in the bud as quickly as possible. And I think it's incredibly sad that Harry, when he 
went up to Balmoral, only spent about 12 hours there. Probably half of it was in a bed sleeping. And he did not spend time with his family. And I think it was both that Megan and him had a tiff over why she couldn't go to Balmoral because she initially intended on going. And that his family just doesn't even trust him enough to be there, have him be there, I think, in an intimate moment because they don't know if he's recording them. They don't know if what they say in this moment of grief is gonna be used on Netflix in some way. And so Harry and Meghan's ambiguousness about the memoir, about the, the Netflix show and everything, really needs to have them all take a step back and go, okay, we cannot allow Harry and Meghan to have any more inroads in because we can't trust them. And I think that's really, really clear. Charles had to mention them, but he doesn't trust them. So guys, what do you think of some of Charles's actions in his first about 24, 36 hours as king? Do you think he is doing a good job? Do you think he should publicly say Harry and Meghan's titles as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex should be pulled? What about, you know, Prince and Princess for Archie and Lily? Do you think that will happen or not? Let me know in the comments below. And obviously I will be continuing with content surrounding um, Her Majesty's death. And just if you're wondering why I haven't done a particular video just commemorating Her Majesty, uh, I have followed the Royals for a while, but I don't feel like I know enough perhaps maybe to do a full video on it as much as I know about some of the other Royals. But that's something I'll definitely still consider. I may do it, I may not. But obviously what I think to be clear as well, because some people are saying, well, why don't you focus more on the Queen? Well, you know, the Queen's legacy is Charles and William. And I'm curious to see how this legacy will continue through them because they are the future and they are what, the ones that are gonna be carrying the banner forward. And it'll be a very complicated time, I think, in these next couple of months because they have this trouble of filling the shoes of a woman who reigned for 70 years. And while also dealing with troublesome elements like Harry and Meghan, and Prince Andrew. How do they deal with all these things? Because that is gonna be how they will rule. And I think that will be rather interesting. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I just hit 20,000, which is crazy. And so I hope this channel just keeps growing. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed already, why don't you? We are awesome here. So anyways, guys, I will have a new video out soon. Bye.